did we start noise or just we talked oh, about this? Oh, finished. Oh, okay, good. We were up to this, right? Jesus. Okay. We talked about Trump. Jesus. Okay. All right. Good. So you guys are a bit ahead of uh, B and D. Uh, social noise we talked about. Okay. So today we, we are going to talk about uh, how to deal with noise. Uh, for those of you who were absent for the past few classes, I'll just summarize in a few words. This is not going to be um, a detailed discussion. I'll just say that what are the noises? First noise is external or environmental noise that comes from outside. Second is the physiological noise that comes from your body, both from the speaker side and also from the uh, uh, audience's side. If you are sitting in the audience, you are uh, down with the fever, 104 degrees fever. You really cannot concentrate. You really cannot uh, listen to the speaker. And on the other hand, if you're the speaker, <laughs> you'll have big, big trouble delivering your message to the audience. So you have to be in sound health. That's OK. Then the uh, uh, psychological noise. Psychological noise actually refers to the uh, noise that comes from your, uh, be your uh, mental state, whatever mental state you are in. You're angry, you're agitated, you're frustrated, you won't be able to communicate. Uh, same goes for the speaker and the audience. Then, uh, uh, as the, uh, I guess, psychological, then social noise. Social noise is the most difficult one to actually um, overcome. Because social noise means uh, your uh, previous background or the context on which you grew up. You have some kind of mentality that was uh, accumul that accumulated, accumulated manilche over the years. So if you are coming from a, uh, say, English medium school background, you will have a different, uh, you, will ha you will have some sort of a um, social noise with someone who studied in the madrasa. Okay? Not even, I'm not really saying that this one is bad, this one is good, but there are two different levels. So when you are talking to, a, um, talking to an audience, which uh, most of which are uh, coming from very conservative background, you have to really uh, think or you, you will have to be very, very careful choosing your words. So that, because uh, probably one thing English medium school uses the way they talk, that might probably offend them. Or, and also it happens age-wise. If you're talking to a, an audience of 50 plus uh, uh, people, but you are in your 20s, so that really matters how you are choosing your words. It goes the other way also. You are, say, 30, and you're talking to a bunch of 10-year-olds. So you have to kind of uh, think about that. Social background, uh, your, uh, their experience level, all these are social noise. Social, then we come to semantic noise. Semantic noise means what? What does it mean? Semantic noise. Hasha, but it more to deal with the meaning. Hasha so means semantics means rhythm. No. So if I say semantic, what is semantic? This is semantic, right? Semantic. Semantic. Semantic means has to deal with the uh, meaning. Semantic. So that means whatever you are saying, 
does the audience comprehend its meaning? Does it make sense to them? And syntactic is like more has to do with the uh, way a certain language is spoken. It has syntactic means convention or style or some set rules that you have certain rules by which we speak. Okay? So syntactic noise, if it comes from there, that means what? I speak with a, a, a wrong grammar. If I am speaking with the wrong grammar, then it's definitely it's going to confuse the audience. So that is syntactic noise. Okay? So depending on that, how do we overcome? And can can I get an I get a definition? What is the noise? I need some recap actually. Recap maniki. Sir, noise is something some unusual sound or unusual sound. Not only sound, the thing I was actually referring to that something that resides that interferes uh, between the communication between the communication so between the two. When you are, yes, when you are communicating with an audience, whatever uh, problem that might interfere, that those are called noise. It can be with the speaker, it can be with the audience. Okay? So the sooner we can realize that, or we can um, uh, get a concept about that, the better for us as speakers. Okay? So if I uh, know you guys, I mean, I, 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 most of you, I know almost all of you from the, my first or second day of classes. So I have an idea that what kind of audience you are. So I will deliver my speech or whatever lecture according to that. So I will try to overcome the noises. So do you understand? Do we understand that what is noise? And uh, why do we need to avoid noise? Communicate properly. To make our communication efficient and effective. Okay? So the first one is the environmental noise. Environmental noise, we have to, uh, whatever says uh, in that class, some people are talking very loudly. So you cannot hear me. That is the noise. Or maybe you are uh, trying to uh, talk over phone, but uh, right beside you, your nephew or niece shouting like anything or someone in the kitchen washing dishes, water sound and the sound, cranking sound of the plates and everything. Sir, so you can hear. Environmental noise, sir, audience people Huh? Yeah. Let's say uh, people in the back, they're just talking amongst themselves while I'm trying to deliver my speech. That is an environmental noise. Okay? So it's mostly external. So to avoid that, uh, there is, uh, I mean, we are saying that try to hold your presentation at a venue free from environmental noise, like in a uh, soundproof auditorium or room. But many a times, the speaker doesn't have the um, liberty to choose that. Say, you, like, look at the, um, opposition parties these days. They have to, why are they speaking in a loud voice when they are talking to a camera or, because people are around them, they are also talking, their cars moving, they are honking and all those things. So they have to kind of subside those noises so that the intended speaker, the microphone, they hear only their tone, so they have to raise their tone. So here is the um, use of intonation. Intonation means you use your voice, you raise it or you lower it, just in case to make the communication efficient. 
please, uh, if you do not understand any of the words that I say, raise your hand, I'll stop and I'll explain. So what is the term? Intonation. Intonation. Intonation means the use of voice. your voice, your tone, to make a communication effective or better. Okay? All right, now, physiological noise, it has to do with the body. So we, that, that said, we have to be in our uh, sound health condition, both the audience and the uh, speaker. But other than that, there is some physiological thing that we have to, people may have speech impairment or uh, hearing impairment. Impairment block. So they cannot hear you or they cannot talk. So most of the time in the uh, Western countries we see that on TV, when the speaker is talking, there is a guy beside him who is doing the sign language. So that is used, that is um, meant for the audience who are deaf and dumb. That's not a very polite way of saying that. We would say speech impairment or hearing impairment. Okay? So uh, that's how you overcome the physical noise. Okay. Psychological noise. So psychological noise means it says depends on the state of the mind, both for the speaker and the audience. So uh, we have to first, for a speaker, you have to engage the audience. Although the audience, I mean, you're here for the first time, you have missed certain classes, then you're, you're thinking that whatever the teacher is saying, will I be able to understand? Or am I lagging behind? So what happens? As I did a few minutes ago, I said, if you do not understand, ask questions. You don't need to be silent. If you are silent, then you are losing. So that is also changing your mental state. So you have to be uh, ready to receive what, a, uh, what the speaker is saying. You have to really uh, be in a uh, ready state that, yes, some message is coming to me and I should be active in responding or active in receiving that. So that, and on the speaker. Conscious, conscious. conscious, yes, conscious, yeah, and ready. Uh, for the speaker, you have to encourage open communication. Open communication means that you are not barring anybody if you, someone, tries to speak, I should not say, stop, let me finish first. I will stop and I will say, okay, whatever on your mind, speak out, okay? So that is open communication. Active listening, I'm listening to you. It's not like, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever she or he is saying, oh, okay. I go to the next topic. No, I will engage, I will answer your question, then we'll move to the next. Uh, then uh, empathy. Empathy means actually being in someone's shoes. Empathy or sympathy mode patko koti. Sympathy is like yes, you feel bad for someone, and then you are trying to console him or her trying to make him or her heart feel better. Empathy means you are actually trying to understand how that person is feeling. Then you are uh, choosing your response in, in terms of that. So em empathy means you're getting more involved. Sympathy is all right, but empathy is the level of um, getting closer to the person you are showing empathy for. So it is like we say we are in their shoes. All right? So that's how, what will happen? 
then the audience's mind and the speaker's mind, they will come in contact. Uh, this is a, there's a word called mind melt. Have you heard anywhere? Mind melt. Melt maniki. So minds are coming together and they are becoming one. So that is called mind melt. So a great speaker can do that. Melting minds, like he, uh, he or she is communicating the way that the whole audience is feeling what the speaker is trying to say, which is very difficult to do. I can assure you, which is very difficult to do, but if you can do that, you are a great speaker. And all the great speakers in the history of mankind were mild melters. They could raise the crowd. They could persuade the crowd. And like say, huh? like <laughs> Yeah, you could say that. And not only him, others are there too. The one we uh, hear less is Maulana Bhashan. He used to be a very persuasive speaker. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> probably will not be able to find, but try to find it on the internet. Uh, you might get, I'm, I'm not really sure, because, uh, uh, oh, Khan. yes, he's a uh, great speaker, but Solimullah Khan has some problems. Uh, organizational confusion. He hops around the topic, hops money key. Jump call, jump call. So he knows a lot. Actually, he cannot avoid it. He knows a lot, so he feels like, well, I need to also talk about this. But if you have to uh, keep the audience uh, with you, you have to let them also follow you. Right? If you're moving to another topic, they will move to that topic, but then you have to time, uh, you have to uh, give them time to settle there. Yes, I, we're in the new topic now. Okay, now you're trying to understand. Being the audience, you're trying to understand that yes, uh, I'm understanding what he's saying. But he doesn't give you that time. He moves to another one. So that's not a good way to do it. But he knows a lot, that's for sure. Uh, I would say you would also, if you go to the internet, I mean, TED Talk has a lot of speakers, but they are given a 14 or 17 minute time. In that time, uh, they have to uh, deliver a message, but there is no response with the audience. So that's one kind of lecture. <coughs> That's true, but also the audience will feel that, yes, he's talking about us. Whatever he's talking, it concerns us. Well, they cannot really mind me out, but they, what they try to do is like uh, give a persuasive talk. And for that matter, you can also have uh, um, any um, uh, online, um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, whoever, whoever, canvasser, any, any who would like, like uh, it's called the uh, pitching, pitch, pitching for business. P I T C H. Pitch means one of the things you know, or just correct you know, and how to manage the convince correct, just that one. So cold pitcher, what they, what they active pitcher, what they active pitching means it's a real time. Eh? You are trying to call call people up. Uh, cold pitching all of you know, that is letter part of it, or text message part of it. It's something we receive all the time. That is called pitching. Uh, pitching, uh, let's see. Actually, there is. Uh, 
To overcome that, I mean, to get rid of them, there is no way. So this is a business-oriented culture here. And what happens is that every uh, business action you take, you pay for that. And because of that, the telecom companies will make you victim of this sort of constant pitch. You can block them, or you can avail some services that blocks them, but you have to pay money. So, as we are in the, yes, as we are in the market economy, so the, it, it's very hard to stay away from these pictures. So, but most of the time, try to ignore them. That, that's I, I would say the I mean that works for me. <laughs> okay, uh, so psychological knowledge, uh, noise, create a positive and supportive environment. I mean, you have to show the audience that you care for them. And they can get a, uh, whatever their needs, they will get some sort of help from you. Like, you are projecting a uh, positive attitude towards the audience. That yes, I'm here to try to solve the question, uh, your problem. Probably I won't be able to solve it 100%, but I'll try, and I'll try it sincerely. So that sort of vibe, when you are projecting, that will make the supportive environment. So that is overcoming the psychological noise. So one thing you should have noticed, notice mane, loko kore thakte balkonra, je all these are really calling for getting involved with the audience. Mane, e babate irkom na je, you are standing aloof, aloof bujato na, it's dure dariye thakka, mane, karo shate na me la, you really cannot do that if you have to be a presenter or if you have to be an effective speaker. You have to melt with the audience. You have to uh, kind of try to reach them sincerely that, yes, I'm, I'm doing it for your own good, so you should listen to me. That's sort of, you have to project that attitude. We attitude that. All right, now comes the social noise. It is very difficult. Social noise, it can be cultural differences in communication style, gesture and art, customs. Cultural difference meaning it can be between um, countries, can be between um, village, rural area and the urban area. Urban to Bujiyam, right? Sorry, is it accents in Upuru different color? More accents? Uh -huh, differently. Uh, the way you order some, some word, if you, if you are, say some people are uh, saying very straightforward, they may seem very rude, but probably he, did, he or she did not mean it. But the way they communicate is very straightforward. So you are sometimes hard, because you are probably from a culture that, uh, that is like polite and gentle. Or, that can be say uh, in Bangladesh, we do not, do not very rarely thank our fathers and our parents, right? Mm -hmm. If they are doing something, we really don't thank you for thank you father. We don't say. But if you look at the Western uh, cultures, they for a single thing they thank their uh, parents. parents. Meaning what? They thank almost everyone. That happens, that I noticed. When I went to the States, if you do not thank people, they think you are rude. Any single thing, if you are saying thank you, then they become very happy and say, oh, they will give you a pleasant smile, or they will say, you are welcome. But most of us in Bangladesh, we don't really thank. Say if someone, you, you, are, you are late for class, elevator, the lift is already going, it, the door is closing. And you say, please hold the door for me. So the person inside holds the door. You come in and you don't say anything. <laughs> but he doesn't, he doesn't, yes. 
and, uh, but uh, he probably does not even expect that you say thank you, but you should. See, these are the things like, these are small things, but in terms of when you are talking about changing the mentality of a certain people, then it's getting, even getting very uh, Sorry, difficult. Are you doing psychology with the foreigner? Yes, yes. These are, uh, like I said in the last class, all these noises are overlapping or nested one inside other. We should call a social noise that involves your uh, psychological noise, that involves your um, um, semantic noise, syntactic noise, because the way you talk, that is syntactic. The way you mean, that is semantic. Uh, the mindset you have, that is psychological. And overall, if you are, if you are in a, uh, from a background, you are, we are all social beings, social animals. What does that mean? That means as a uh, group, as a collection of human beings, we have similarity of thinking amongst us. In Bangladesh, we think it probably in a certain manner. But that does not always make you right. So when you are going outside the country or meeting people from outside, you have to be sensitive about that. The way I'm saying, is it hurting them? And they have to do the same. Because they're coming and, oh, you, are, you guys, you don't know nothing. We know everything. And you look at how things uh, are really, I mean, current conflict between Palestinians and Israelis. Israelis are very, they have been brainwashed. The Palestinians or Arabs, they're violent, uh, they're very violent. They will uh, try to kill you or that sort of thing. I mean, I, I was watching a YouTube video a few days ago. One uh, Abby Martin, uh, one American journalist, she went to Israel in the, in the streets of Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, their capital city, and he, uh, she was, Interviewing young people like you. Sir, sir, one minute. Tel Aviv is the capital of Palestine, but Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Israel and Palestine are different. No, no, it's a, it was the, uh, um, it is the capital of Israel. Is Jerusalem is divided. So they are saying, Netanyahu is saying that we'll also make Jerusalem the capital of Israel. That means they will take uh, the whole thing. You'll find it on the internet that uh, Jerusalem became a very desolate city. Desolate meaning the streets are empty, you have um, uh, surveillance cameras every corner, uh, not that many, there is a, uh, a tall wall in the middle of the city that is separating uh, the Jews and the Palestinians. So. Uh, I mean, people there, they have a certain view. People inside Israel, like Tel Aviv, that is called Israel proper, I mean, after Israel and Hitler. They are feeling really uh, somehow, I mean, they are privileged. They get everything for sure. But people in the periphery, you know, uh, kibbutz, kibbutz, a word tahan kum, Newspaper, kibbutz law, settlement law, in the outer periphery, outer periphery. I mean, Israel by the when it is extending its borders, with border is around the the town gula, by the local area gula, gula ka bolte kibbutz, K I B B U T Z, kibbutz. Gula ka naam hai, kibbutz Barry. Hamas jekhane attack kore chhe, toh kibbutz Barry. Kibbutz ke kya naam? Kibbutz mane hote chhe ka township. Settlement. So there, people they feel that uh, yes, they are doing something to the uh, Palestinians, and uh, yes, there is a sense of vulnerability. They might attack back, but in the Israel proper, 
they are really free. They, they don't even dream of getting hurt by the Palestinians. So, they look at their attitude. They differ from place to place. And they also influence your communication style. They are very carefree. Carefree means if you go to the kibbutz, they are like a bit tense with a mental state. So it, it differs. If you are talking to people in the uh, war, uh, people during the war, then yeah, their social noise you have to really take into consideration. And like uh, Bambabandhu's speech, he was actually talking to a population who are um, were feeling victims of uh, Pakistani um, exploitation. Sir, so, did Mark the speech in the Oh my God. Uh, maybe later, let me finish this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, maybe okay. later. Okay. After we uh, finish this conceptual. Uh, Delivery, then we'll go for that. Okay. So what happens is that for social knowledge, like women uh, in in Dhaka city, they, especially who are riding the buses, you feel the social noise. How? Uh, there's no seat left for you to uh, get it. People are uh, male passengers are sitting there. And if you ask, uh, this is lady sick, can I get it? And say, you are looking for everything equal. So here you have to stand. Everything is equal. <laughs> so that, that is the social noise. OK? That, this is not right, but people have that already ingrained inside. And uh, the other social noise is that probably Say you lived in a village, so your father and mother uh, are sending you to attend this university in Dhaka, and you will have to be here alone. Probably you have to live in the mess, or you are being a woman. The person around your house in the village, they're saying, "What was? Why are you sending her to Dhaka?" What? Uh, women has to go to uh, uh, in the in-laws. They will get married and they go away eventually. Why do we have to educate them so much? So that is social noise. Okay. So, or maybe um, people on the top of the society. Uh, say in the United States, people coming out supporting the Palestinians are mostly from middle class and down. Upper class people, they are not really reacting as much. Sir, I no, that is not, you are creating a social noise, but that is not a social noise. Like, uh, yeah, you, you, you brought out a good thing. Trump, <coughs> yes, he was actually banking on, banking on Maniki, Uttatakuji the uh, cultural baggage of the white people. Hero come? You, you are white. You cannot support your family with the income of one person. Most of the Americans are in big, big trouble these days. Not even these days. Even from the early 80s, they, were, uh, they could not support their uh, family with one person's income. So what happens? Uh, the mother goes to uh, work also, but still it is, it is getting, they are not getting the quality of life. The, the prices of things that are going up, so they are getting really frustrated. And here comes Trump, he says, listen, all these immigrants and black people and Chinese, they came to your country and they are stealing your job. That's why you are in trouble. But the reality is different. How is it different? Most of the corporations, they run the corporation. Corporations means what? The huge company that runs the economy. 
like in Bangladesh, we have Boshundara, Sami, Jomuna, Bexinko. These are huge corporations. But American corporations are even bigger than that. Billion dollars market. So, they should be companies of corporations. Corporation, that is like uh, a term that is used to describe them. And I am using the term to uh, show the, uh, the their, how large they are. So, what is the the corporation? But the way they do business, that is the origin of the term. But the originally, I mean, the, in reality, the corporations are huge companies who have, who have the impact on the economy. Like say, Boshundara, say, they say whatever they produce, they stop producing it. What will happen? Things, prices will go up unless some new one comes in. Like there are oil producing corporations in, in the United States. There are uh, pharmaceutical corporations. There are, there are um, weapons making corporations, weapon manufacturers like um, Lockheed Martin, Lockheed Martin Northrop Grumman, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, uh, Raytheon, Corporation. They are making only weapons. P-52 bombers. So whenever there is a conflict around the world, they get paid. Yeah, so, and one thing also you have to uh, uh, know that Cobb County, Namekta County, that is in Delaware, that is in Delaware, no, sorry, Virginia, in the United States. That county, county meaning a, an area, like say Gulshan, or maybe a bit bigger, that area is the uh, richest country, uh, richest county or city in the United States. Why? They have the corporations, all the uh, weapons making corporations are there. The manufacturers are there. So they are always producing something, so there is no unemployment. People are making money and they are happy, although they are making things that are killing people all around the world. So the expense is also this. Expense upset, but still, I mean, you are thriving on killing people. How ironical is that? You are thriving on pe killing people. You make money killing people. So all this, yes. Yes, I was. Actually, uh, yes, I, 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 I really don't have that much of a proof, but yes, there is some plausibility. Plausibility logic And the same goes for Israel too. When Hamas attacked, it is really unthinkable that they did not know the intelligence. They didn't have the intelligence. They probably knew, but what happened? Netanyahu was going down. He's uh, losing his credibility. He was charged with corruption. So he may have said that, let's start a war. People, attention will be diverted. I'll be saved. And Bush did the same thing. Yes, Bush did. Uh, George uh, W. Bush, he did the same thing. He had the most uh, lowest uh, lowest rating at that time. So when he started the war, people became very patriotic and they started supporting him. But uh, yeah, there are some plausibility in that. Okay, so I, I think I made you understand that, yeah, what is so social noise. Anything that is in your worldview, worldview will the Bujaki, Drishti Bhumi, Vishru Drishti. That was built over your culture or your place of living, and that is becoming a, a an obstruction for your communication. That is called social noise. So anything goes, but right? it is very difficult to understand. Uh, I'm sorry, overcome. So then what do you have to do? You have to 
You seek. Seek means tower. You seek to understand and respect diverse perspectives. Diverse money of change, tomar chalada. So you try to understand uh, their perspective and then try to clarify any potential misunderstanding due to cultural variation. The, uh, I'm from a different culture and the audience are there also from different culture. So if I say something that might be misinterpreted, that's my, that might have a wrong explanation to them. So I have to be very, very careful in choosing my message, the way I talk, the choice of words, all these. So uh, challenging or confronting social noise is very difficult. I hope as a presenter you don't have to do that, but if it comes to that, you have to be very, very ready. Sir, gesture means Gesture means uh, the way you are approaching, like bo almost body language. And it is also sometimes uh, uh, used to describe your action. Yeah, his gesture toward, yeah, his gesture toward me was very, really very friendly. So uh, what do you do? Then you are probably patting him on his back or you are holding his hand, that sort of thing. Very friendly gesture. All right, so we understand that. Now let's uh, see semantic noise. How to, uh, the same thing comes actually. You have to make it very clear. The whatever uh, words you are choosing, they have to be clear and unambiguous. Semantic means uh, uh, things to deal with meaning, meaning of something, semantic. Meaningful. Meaningful, yes, you could say. So you have to uh, make sure that the language you are uh, speaking, that should be clear and understandable. So that's why you have to avoid <coughs> jargon. Jargon means domain, terminology. Uh, say, we are, as a, a computer science student, you guys know what is debugging, right? in the logic of your program. But if you are talking to, uh, say, a farmer in the field, when you are talking debugging, it will just go over his head. Yes, so that is, there you are using the jargon. So when, if I am talking to you, and if I use some jargon words, you won't be able to understand. Jargon means uh, some word that are specific to a particular career or a particular um, domain. Yeah. Uh, jargon level, Vishesh Shabda Bhumi, Vishesh Shabda Bhandar. Vishesh Goshthir Juno Vishesh. Yeah, Vishesh, good, very good. The Vishesh Goshthir Juno Vishesh Shabda Bhandar. So that is called jargon. Appropriate word in the appropriate situation. Uh, appropriate word now. We talk about a far fetched word. Right? The appropriate word for appropriate scenario. Jargon may not always be very uh, appropriate. So, the situation would depend on the situation. Is situation and problem? also people and also their knowledge. So, it's it's best to avoid jargon words. You have to. Uh, use words that are understood by mm -hmm. everyone, mm -hmm. almost everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it becomes that semantic noise because the audience is not really uh, understanding the meaning. Okay. Now, uh, syntactic noise. Syntax. Syntax. Syntax of uh, that has. What is it? What does it have to do? So frame or design. Any uh, rules of language. That is syntax. You, you know the syntax of C language or Java. That means what? When you end a line, you put a semicolon. That's the syntax. So when you are talking a particular language, you know that after that, whatever uh, word or symbol comes after what? 
So you know that you have to know the sequence. And the audience, you have to make sure that the audience also knows the sequence. So if you are talking, uh, the other day I was talking about uh, a Spanish syntax, right? To him I gave the book. But I would, Bangla amra bultam je, amra oke boita dichi, but take boita dao. But totally different uh, sequence of words. Aki sequence, uh, bane, aki word, but sequence is different. Bane, aki word meaning semantic meaning taki, but they are placed differently, uh, back and forth. Okay? So that is the syntactic noise. Uh, in a nutshell, this means that the intended message framed with a sound grammatical structure. Sound money? Money. Money. Shorty. Very good. Shorty grammar structure. DA. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll stop here actually. Because we are going to go for the discussion and listening and your spe speaking. This is uh, called stage fright. We are going to talk about it in the next class. We are going to speak. Okay. Uh, can you? Okay.